People who are securities, it's dangerous job. Everyone has his own law to do things. Every time people got knives, got firearms, they got weapons, shooting, shooting. I ask myself, where's the police? It's, Fuck this police. Fuck this police. Fondly known as the Tavern by the Seas, Cape Town is South Africa's oldest city and the second largest after Johannesburg. The port capital is renowned for its scenic beauty and culture, but also has a conflicted history. Apartheid, South Africa's system of racial segregation, ended 20 years ago, but inequality and violence continue to plague the country. Last year, the South African police announced the country's worst crime stats in nearly a decade. The country averages 45 murders a day, two times as many as the rest of Africa and more than four times the international average. But Cape Town and its booming tourism industry show little signs of this unrest, except for all the electric fences. Private security is a billion dollar industry in South Africa, a consequence of the country's social inequality, violent history, and inept police force. To see how the Western Cape earned its reputation as the most violent province in South Africa, we went to the communities of Kailisha and Mitchell's Plain in the Cape Flats, where two thirds of Cape Town's murders take place. We met with Philip, a resident of Kailicha and security industry employee. For him, safety is a concern both on and off the job. My neighbor don't know what I'm doing because they think I'm collecting recycling bottles. Because if they can know I'm working, oh. They want weapons you've got. Bulletproof, the uniform. This is where the destination of the bottles. So I don't socialize with much friends, they will know my routines. They will want to know how I'm working, you know, as a security. I'm protecting, like, the people from suburbs, people from big towns, big buildings, big uh, businesses, you know, where you see fleshy stuff, where else you're coming from, very, very poor environment, you know. It's big risk, it's big stress. Why they do the private security in Cape Town is because someone is breaking a window of a car or someone is trying to break in in somewhere, you know? Police, they can't afford to do. That's why they need the private securities. There's a serious lack of safety resources in the Cape Flats, but it's actually home to many guards that work in the private security industry, which is one of the largest entry-level employers in the country. There's a high demand for additional protection in these areas, but with a third of the population unemployed, few residents can afford private security, and even fewer companies are willing to work there. Mitchell's Plain, a neighboring community, reports more crime annually than any other precinct in South Africa, especially related to gang violence. One security company, however, is up to the challenge of working there. We went on a patrol with a guard from SecuPro, an armed response company that does its best to protect the families that live in this crime-ridden area. This is now Mitchell's Plain. Mitchell's Plain is a very dangerous area. You don't go in there if you don't have the necessary tools. Sikke Pro has been operating in the Mitchell's Plain area for the last 20 years. We do commercial and residential, alarm systems, armed reaction, all of that. What is your relationship like with families that live in the area? Well, we try to protect the families in the area. Most of our staff is also coming from this area that lives in this area, works in the area. So by the end of the day, we're all just trying to save lives. So what do you look out for when you do patrols? Normally, uh, groups of people, what they're doing. I don't know if you noticed that on the right hand side we just passed there was two oaks standing with pit bulls. That's normally a sign of a gang nearby. How is it like man? Do we have a documentary with crime? Gangsters, of course, see any Mitchell's plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Die mensen dat moest vragen. Aan jullie wat nou? Die man gaat geld die zo brengen. Hey guys, wake up. Like everybody, you see this place has a drug. Has a drug? Yeah, you see. 
see, with this one, the Brits money, all those kinds of, I all see only Brits money. Say, okay, shoot the movie. We will operate. In responding to crime, did the police come when you call them? They come to auto with this one. Afterwards. <laughs> and they shoot. And they shoot. And they come quicker. But if you, you somebody stand you, yeah, they, uh, they, they don't want to do it. So you guys, what is that shape? Gangsters here in Elderly Shit. Lots of gangsters here. Drag for money. Robbing people. You see the other oaks that came in there, they told us you better leave now. It's half past five, it's time for them to come into the areas now. And the gang bosses, they don't tolerate stuff like this. Uh -huh. They will actually walk up to us, rob all of us, and we'll be standing there with nothing. To better understand the reality Cape Town residents are living in, we went to speak with Dan Plato, Minister of Community Safety for the Western Cape. Well, there's a couple of challenges facing the Western Cape with regard to safety and security. We're facing a major drug problem, shootings on a week-to-week -week basis, killings of gang members. We need to get people to do something else instead of sitting and drinking and taking a sharp object and stab someone to death. But it is not possible for the police uh, to man each and every street. In, in the Cape Town. Uh, there's not enough police officers available to do that. But the private security companies is playing a major role within our communities across the Western Cape. They fill that gap, they roam the streets. When they see crime is happening, when they detect something is not okay and kosher, they report to the South African police services. With nearly half a million registered private security guards and almost 9,000 companies, the private security industry in South Africa is larger than the country's police and army combined. The scale of the industry has everything to do with the country's past. After decades of systematic racial oppression, South Africa held its first democratic election in 1994. But it was an unstable transition. Severe racial prejudice continued under the black majority. The new government disbanded the South African Defense Force a skilled army, but also a painful reminder of the forced segregation of apartheid. This shakeup left many white officers without jobs or demoted beneath their less experienced black counterparts, who were elected to leadership roles in the government, army, and police force, often without proper training or experience. Some of these white former officers left the government altogether and took their skills to the private sector. Over the years, this continual shift has left the country with an embarrassing police force. Reports of police brutality in South Africa have more than tripled in the last decade. Faith in the system is severely strained as only one in a hundred cases filed against officers actually results in criminal conviction. The South African police declined to comment for this story. The continued public distrust of the police has in turn sped the growth of the private security sector. It has also produced companies whose responsibilities go far beyond alarm installation. To see this type of business in action, we went to Bassett Alarms, a local security provider in the northern suburbs of the Western Cape. Armed response officers are always the first respondents. So even before the police or the ambulance arrive on the premises, we are there first. So the armed response officer must have the means and the qualifications in order to handle the emergency. If it's a fire, if it's a medical, or if it's a positive break-in, they need to have the necessary training and skills to handle that. If you are armed response officer, you must have identification. He's obviously carrying his pepper spray, his tonfa. If you take the baton out and it can extend out. We see ourselves as the last Boy Scouts. So we help anybody that, uh, that lives within our operational area. Even though they don't necessarily pay for Even though they're not a paying client. If you're stuck next to the road, your safety is our concern. This is our community, this is our neighborhood. So we need to take care of, of any situation that arises. Bravo, uh, Bravo Central, Bravo Central. This is Bravo November message, over. In a chase, sometimes the police could be very far away from the situation or from the location. So what we do then is we will follow the vehicle to a certain area where we are not area bound. 
and then we will contact the police saying the last location was this way or that way, but the police are usually always on par to chase after the vehicle. Yeah, the area that we're going into is heavily under prostitution, drugs. Why are you here? I, I, I did get bankrupt. I was okay. Bankrupt bank. being bankrupt. Yeah. Did you have a business? No, I didn't know. So you was, were broke. Yeah, I was. Here. Why did? Why, if I may ask, how did you get broke? It's, was it the drugs? It's just the drugs. Yeah. With such a high demand and an imbalance of skills and resources, crime has become commodified in South Africa. The free market for safety clearly benefits the wealthiest residents in the country, where the average white South African earns six times what a non-white resident earns. In certain areas, some residents are willing to pay multiple companies to buy the peace of mind and rapid response that the police fail to provide. 24-7 security monitoring is common, and entry-level positions are often filled by employees like Philip, who is all too familiar with signs of danger. You see this? What is that? It's a panic. We see, ah, I'm scared of those guys. I don't trust those four guys, five guys. I press, they will come quick, quick, quick here. Yeah. So first, I must click, click to the, to the point first. So now he's gonna send me to another house to check everything to that house. Just one thing I do is the machine, blood wound patrol, and report anything you see, report, report, report. So I have to go there to my chair. There's a book I must record every patrol I do. Maybe a madam is taking a dog out. You know most, they've got necklace, watches, earrings. Those boys are coming down from the mountain. Ah, gold. What, 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 what. Yes, yeah, yeah. everything gone. Yeah. That is why we here for those things like that. So can you tell me in uh, Kailiche where you live, what about private security? Oh, they are dying every day there, dying. Because there's a big malls. They are making safe the mall. They get shot. It's not a deal to have people living uh, with barbed wire, fencing, and high walls, massive security systems. It says to me something on the safety front is not altogether. I think uh, private security companies will be with us for quite a lengthy period of time. We would love to have such a vibrant South African police services to fill uh, all the gaps and to fulfill all the roles and responsibilities, but reality is heavy that, that we do not have that life luxury, unfortunately. But it is not only for the government to do it alone, but for each and every citizen to play his or her part and role as well. We met with Mark Stewart, a Cape Town resident and a member of his local neighborhood watch, a role many civilians have been forced to fill. Having the security company at your beck and call is quite expensive. Um, you've got to pay a monthly subscription of about three or four hundred rand, and a lot of these people, they just scrape by, you know. So they depend on the neighborhood watch to a certain degree. Now, what happens is when we say, see something like this, we approach the guy because obviously we don't see this as a major threat. And if we suspect something, then we call it in. Yes, Mr. Batsuki, can you tell us about your story on another place? Can you tell us about As a taxpayer, I expect the police to take this responsibility, but I know that the resources are limited in terms of that. As a citizen of the country, I put it, I've taken it upon myself to, um, to get involved. The private security industry has its own shortcomings as well. Despite strict regulation, the size of the market and the public's desperation allows for inept firms to provide subpar services for a subpar price. Some companies have been accused of poor training, inadequate vetting, superficial background checks, as well as failing to pursue disciplinary action against employees who break the law. Inside jobs are often rumored, but hard to prove. With such a demand for services, the public is left with little options. 
you must remember that this is a business first. And as soon as you start utilizing your resources where you don't have an income from, you are taking away, first of all, resources from where it's needed, from people that's paying. Now you're moving it to an area where you are needed, but nobody is paying towards that. That stays the government's responsibility to make sure that law and order are being upheld within the country. As beautiful as it is troubled, Cape Town really is a tale of two cities. Muggings and burglaries continue to be a concern, but the fortification of wealthy neighborhoods has only added to the sense of segregation in the country. The concern for safety among South Africa's elite doesn't come close to those living in poor, underdeveloped communities, where 80% of the crime in the country actually occurs. Philip guards a neighborhood that saw only four murders last year, yet he lives in an area whose police precinct responded to over 160 in that same time. Where he works, private security companies profit from the perceived fear of crime. Where he lives, the crime is very real and the profits go only to the criminals. This is my, my home. This is my small kitchen, you know? When I want to entertain, I don't have TV, sorry. <laughs> it's all my things are here on these clothes. This is what I put on when I'm putting my, putting my clothes, preparing to go to work. You need safety here. You can't go without safety. My name charts for the way. Four o'clock in the morning, my train is 20 past four. Now, I have to, to breathe in, breathe out, praying to God, nothing will happen today. Every day you have to pray. There's no day you won't pray when you're going to work, at that time on the mornings. Finishing praying, and then I go. 